Good morning. Good morning. Isn't it wonderful to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Not just great, but it's wonderful. Will you stand with me as we sing our call to worship? My tribute. <coughs> Two times. And welcome to Pleasant Hill. I hope and trust that uh, you've been walking with Jesus this week. And if you haven't, today will be a good day to start. Amen? Amen. We're glad you're here and uh, we hope and trust that you'll enjoy your time with us today. And uh, I, if you haven't been, we, I just stepped out of a great Sunday school class just a few minutes ago. We've got a lot of good uh, class groups and gatherings that are, that are going on with the church family at 10 o'clock and other times during the week. And if you're not a part of one of those, you need to be. I'm telling you, the Lord was in that room. God was blessing. And I know he's in several of our locations uh, this morning and then throughout the week. So be a part. A lot of great things that are going on. Again, I want you to encourage you to take a look at what's going on with our children's ministry, some of those things that are, that are there. But a couple of key things this week. Uh, and today, beginning at 6 p.m., we will have an administrative board meeting. And uh, the great thing is our board meetings aren't boring. Amen? Uh, we're going to be talking about things that God's doing and things that we're going to be doing and serving Him. And so we encourage you to be a part of that. All members are invited to come and to be a part of that if you'd like. And uh, we're going to be discussing some great things as God leads. So also, August the 6th, please make sure that is on your calendar. August the 6th, uh, we're having our homecoming special services. There will be a combined service right here at 11 o'clock. So we're going to have our service here. 10 o'clock, we're going to have Sunday school. Then we'll be right here at 11 o'clock for joint worship. We're going to have some special children's programming that's going to be going on in the building's ne building next door. Uh, during that uh, 11 o'clock hour, that full hour is going to be really good. So we want you to be here uh, and be a part of that also. And uh, uh, maybe most important, there's going to be a covered dish service, uh, ceremony, you know, meal. Yeah, it, it's going to be right afterwards. And so I'm looking forward to that. I'll be looking and sampling all the great banana pudding. And so, um, hint, hint. And uh, so we're excited about that. And so we want you all to come out and be a part of a very special day as we remember God's blessing over the years and remember some and very special people through whom God has blessed us here at Pleasant Hill. God put this place here for a reason, amen? And it's been a blessing for generations, and we believe uh, the best is yet to come. And so we want to be a part of that. And then uh, Women's Conference on August the 12th. Ladies, if you have not signed up, please do 
So, and I would encourage you to uh, reach out. It's a great opportunity, ladies, to bring a friend or someone you've been looking for an opportunity to either bring them to church or to, to, to do something special with them. Invite them to be a part of the ladies' conference. It's going to be a blessing. Uh, and so please, if you would, go, to on, go online to ph.church. There's a location there that you can go and you can sign up for this event. Please do that today. And uh, to sign up all your friends, neighbors, bring them all. Make sure you bring them all with you. If they're, if they're kind of struggling with it, just tell them, hey, I'm going to come pick you up. I'm going to be at your door and, you know, and pick them and bring them, okay? And so let's, let's fill this place up and, and uh, enjoy what God has in store. I know there's a lot of other things going on in our church family. Uh, be a part. Be a part, amen? Be a part of it. And uh, I'm just so excited about what we have in store in the next few weeks to come. Don't miss out. and Be praying, Lord, what would you have me to do through this fellowship, my church, for your glory? What would you have me to do? Where would you have me to plug in? And let's get engaged because we're getting ready to reach out and love on this community for Jesus. Amen. Amen. God's blessed here. Amen. He's blessed us. He's blessed us so deeply within. And now it's time to pass that blessing on and to share with others also. So we're excited about that. Remember to continue to pray for your friends that we're going to be inviting to church. And uh, uh, Brother Mike will be back in, uh, next week to talk to you more about that for, for this uh, service. Uh, he is actually preaching a homecoming uh, service uh, at, at another, at another, uh, uh, with another group this morning. But uh, he'll be back with us next week to talk more about that. I wonder this morning if there are any special requests as we pre prepare to uh, lift up our prayer concerns to the Lord this morning. Again, please remember, uh, make sure uh, to be careful with the information you share. Don't share too much. The Lord already knows. Amen? Um, and so, because uh, again, we are live streaming today. But if the Lord's placed something on your heart you'd like for us to pray concerning this morning, please let us know. Beth. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry. Yes, remember. Sorry. Any others? I invite you this morning as we as we pray together and as we do that, I, I just want to remind you that during our services, this altar is open. Amen. Uh, this is the Lord's house. And if maybe there's just a special need as we pray together and you feel if you feel the need just to come and to bear that before the Lord in your own way, you're free to do that um, in this place. And uh, this is, a first and foremost, this is a house of prayer. 
This is where we come to meet Jesus. And I've heard testimony from several different people that either throughout the week you come and pray, some in the prayer room, some in here and other places. And this is just, God can meet us anywhere. But there are just those special places that we can sense His presence that just sets, puts our minds and our hearts in the right place to speak to the Lord. And so this morning, if you just feel led, you'd like to come and, and kneel and pray and lift up a special concern or need or or to call on the Lord as we're praying together or as we're singing a song, you are free to do that uh, as we worship the Lord, however the Lord leads. But uh, I invite you, let's, let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you today for the joy of our salvation, for the hope, Lord, of your promise, and for the assurance that we receive in your presence here with us now. And Holy Spirit, we pray that you would, you would commune with us this morning and comfort our hearts, strengthen our minds, give us direction, we pray, and point us this morning to our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we ask, Lord, this morning as we come before you, before we even make requests, we ask that you would hear our prayers of thanksgiving. And we give you thanks today for forgiving our sins for filling our hearts, for raising again and giving us hope as we are raised in you in the newness of life that tomorrow is going to be okay and the best is yet to come. And so, Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for leading the way, for loving us first, and for pointing us home. So, Father, we lift up to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through the guidance of your Spirit, each of these whose names have been voiced this morning. And, Father, we ask that you would answer each prayer according to your perfect will. May your hand be upon each one. May your presence be sensed in each fellowship. And may your hope come. May your hope come. Answer prayer, Lord. Would you pray with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. All hearts and minds clear. Amen. You know Jesus, and you know he loves you. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning, and let's continue our worship as we declare the praise to the Lord together. Amen.
Amen. If you would, I'll invite you to join me with me this morning. Let's stand together as we prepare to greet one another. Would you go ahead and join me? Let's stand together. It's, it's, it's okay. Let's get it. Yeah, there you go. And uh, as we prepare to greet one another, I do remind you this morning that they're offering plates up front, and we do want to thank you for continuing to bless the Lord and giving here at Pleasant Hill. Well, I hope and trust this morning that, that you've been in your word this week, amen? That you've been spending time with the Lord and reading the word of God. It does something to the heart, it does something to the soul that nothing else can do. Words are important, amen? Jesus himself was called the living word, the word of God. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. Jesus was there in the beginning. And then a little bit later in the first chapter of John, it says the word came and dwelt among us, speaking of Jesus Christ. And so we're thankful today that we have the living word. And the living word has empowered others to leave for us the written word so that we could know him. And then as we've been speaking, that the Holy Spirit reminds us and communicates the word of God to our hearts so that we can know and we can understand, we can hold, we can cling to, and that we can grow in our faith. Words are important. Communication is important. I was reading not too, uh, too long ago, and believe it or not, I can read. Um, Julie has to help me a little, but I can read. And, and uh, I, I was reading that Shakespeare had a vocabulary of over 54,000 words can you imagine that over 54,000 words you know what how many words the average adult in the United States has command of today in their vocabulary even including the ones we don't say in church and hopefully not anywhere else somewhere between three and four thousand words We've lost a little something along the way, haven't we? And now we are, here we are living in a day and time, you know, when, when often all we can communicate is with a little smiley face. 
you know, or a picture of some praying hands. And I'm still trying to figure out that picture of the chocolate ice cream with the two eyes, you know, the little swirl, you know. The, I'm still trying to figure that one out. But, but you know, that's, that seems to be all we can do to communicate anymore. And so we lose something when we lose our connection through words. Words are important. You and I are here today because we've either met Jesus We've heard something about Jesus and we're curious. We want to know more about Jesus or we're here because Jesus is just all in us and all over us. And we're here to worship and glorify him. But today we're here because the living word has revealed something to each and every one of us. And he's important. And so the Bible tells us as Jesus One of the last things that he did on earth was he told his disciples and his followers that after he was dead and buried and raised again and ascended to heaven to go and to wait for the Holy Spirit to come. He had taught them about the Holy Spirit. The Old Testament foretold of the Holy Spirit. But he told them to go and wait and pray. And that the Holy Spirit would come. In the book of Ephesians, as Paul writes to the church, and this will be our key theme verse for today. The book of Ephesians in chapter 5, the Bible says, Do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation or which is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. The old English makes it more emphatic. But be ye filled with with the Holy Spirit. And the, the idea is present there that, that in a point in time you're filled with the Spirit, but you go on from that point being filled with the Holy Spirit. Remember last week we talked about that our salvation is not a finish line, but it's a starting line, amen? It's a starting line, and God has begun that work within me and within you. And yes, we are saved in Christ Jesus. We are going on being saved in Christ Jesus and walking and growing in that faith. And the Bible here says to be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in our heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Lord Jesus, help me today to say... Those things, to speak those things which I'm incapable of speaking. Lord Jesus, I ask today that you would speak through me with authority that is not my own, but belongs to you. And Heavenly Father, I ask today that you would help us. Holy Spirit, that you would come alongside us and prepare our hearts and our ears to hear and to receive what you, O Lord, would say to us today. And may our lives be forever changed. In Jesus' name, amen. I wasn't really planning on starting here, but as I was just going back through early this morning and reading and praying and thinking, I was reminded of a passage of Scripture in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And verse 3, the Bible says, For I delivered to you first of all, again, Paul writing to the church at Corinth, I delivered to you, the church, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, or Peter, and then by the twelve, and after that he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part... Remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep, or some have passed away. I noticed something in this passage, though. Over 500 people, he appeared to at once. But yet in the book of Acts, when the church was filled with the Holy Spirit, and they were gathered in that place waiting upon the Lord, there was 120 Where were the other 380? Where did they go? What happened to them? 
Maybe a few of them did pass away. But what happened to the rest? Where were they? I'm so afraid today that so many of us, we get off to a good start in our faith in Christ Jesus, but we don't stick around for the blessing of God's Spirit to fill our lives, to fill us to the full, to do that work within us in which Jesus felt and saw and knew was so important that he would tell them to go and to wait, be filled with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> you know, there's generally three groups of people in, 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 in society. Really, there are just three groups of people. And, and one group of people doesn't know Jesus. They don't know Jesus. They're as lost as a fish in the desert. You know what I mean? They just don't know Jesus. And then there's a, a, another group of people. And, and in this group of people, they have received Jesus as their Savior. But they've not accepted him as the Lord and the master. The, they haven't trusted him enough to lead their lives. You know, fire insurance, right? And then there's another group of people who received Jesus and accepted him as the Savior of their lives. Because there is no other way than but through Jesus Christ to the Father. But they've also accepted him as the Lord of their lives. And they've trusted him. And have been obedient when he says, come and follow me. Now, I want to get this way out of the way at the, at the very beginning with this passage in Ephesians uh, th this morning. Uh, first of all, this passage starts out, it says, do not be drunk with wine. Oh, goodness, here's the preacher going to talk about alcohol, right? You know, and so here we go. And so I just want to get this, this, this out of the way first. And for, now, uh, some of you just woke up. Uh, that's good. good. Welcome. It's good. To, I'm glad you're back with us. Amen. And so, and, and so we're, we're going to get this out of the way. Somebody asked me, said, Brother Chris, do you believe that people will go to hell from taking a drink of alcohol? Well, no, the Bible doesn't say that. And so I'm going to stick with what the Scripture does say. The Bible doesn't say that. Well, well Brother Chris, is it okay to drunk, get drunk? Well, the Bible says don't do that. You know, and we just read it says don't do that. And, and it also says that there will be no drunkards have place in the kingdom of heaven. So the Bible says don't do that. And, and so then you say, well, well Brother Chris, do, do, do you drink alcohol? Well, no, I don't drink alcohol. Alcohol and, and 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 so, well, why don't you drink, Brother Chris? Well, it's really that this simple with me. Uh, a few years back, I read about a University of Oxford study, and they said there was a direct proportional relationship with the amount, even beginning with the smallest amount, with the amount of alcohol that is consumed and the amount of gray matter that is inside the human skull. And most of you have met me and noticed that I don't have much room to play around. Amen? Amen. And so I don't drink alcohol, okay? And so, 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 so there you go. But if we get caught and hung up on just that one thing, we've missed out on the essence of this text because it says that our passion is not to become drunk with wine but to be filled with with the Holy Spirit. That's the directive. Be you filled with the Holy Spirit. Every believer, it's intended for them, you and for me, to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Now, God's talking through Paul to the church here in this passage. He is speaking to believers. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. So what do we have to do to be filled with the Holy Spirit? What's our part? In the filling of the Holy Spirit. I'm glad you asked the question. I'm going to share just a few things from a passage uh, that we have today. The first is this. And I want to start out with that, that portion that sometimes causes a little struggle within the body of Christ. But where it says, do not be drunk with wine in which is access or excess or dissipation. Here's the thing. You have to want God more than you want sin. Now let me qualify that for just a moment. I hope you know as a believer in Jesus Christ, 
Anything that you want more than Jesus is sin to you as a believer. Okay, just checking. All right, just checking. Anything that you want more than Jesus in your life is sin for you and for me. God created everything that is under the sun. And by the way, he created the sun too. huh? He created everything that is and said it is good. The question is whether or not we desire the creation more than the creator. And so we start in that place. If you want to be filled with the Spirit of God, you have to desire to want God more than you want creation, more than you want sin, because the Holy Spirit will not fill the same place where sin exists. That's why the grace that is in Jesus Christ, if you confess your sins, He's faithful and just to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That's right. Why? Because do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, the dwelling place, the tabernacle of God? And so first and foremost, we have to desire God more than we desire sins. But you say, Brother Chris, you don't understand how many times I've failed. How many people here like to fail? Okay, good. I guess right. We, we, we don't. We don't. We, and, and we become afraid. And how many of us here, and, and, and not just Brother Chris, I, you know, maybe if I'm alone here, we'll find something out. And uh, we need to have a prayer meeting for Brother Chris. But how many other than Brother Chris has failed before? Yeah. And we don't like to fail. We don't want to fail. We, and, and sometimes we just can kind of step back and we might be tempted to give up because in the past it didn't work out the way that we expected or even desired or wanted it to but I'm here to tell you there is grace in Christ Jesus for you to succeed in him he that is in you has overcome this world and so he can lead you into that place the good news is this where you can't he can amen And so we're depending upon His grace to enable us to do what we're not able to. One of the the hardest lessons that I had to learn, and I'm still learning, to be honest, is to quit trying so hard to be a believer and trust Jesus to help me walk. Because you see, when my eyes are on Jesus, it's a can-do faith. Amen? Amen? But when Brother Chris is trying to do Brother Chris, it doesn't work. You have to want God more than you want sin. I want to take that a little step deeper, at least for me. You have to want God more than you want your own way. That's another way of saying a similar thing, but hang with me. The Bible says, be filled with the Spirit. Guess who's in charge if you're filled with the Holy Spirit? Put a line through your name and a check mark by His. You see, that's the deal. God sent the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us into all truth. He is the director. He is the leader. He is the one who is pointing the way in Christ Jesus for you and for me. If I am filled with the Holy Spirit, I am no longer in charge. My dad taught me this a long time ago when dealing and working with people. He says, all conflict comes from the disagreement over who's in charge think about it whether that's at home or at work in the church in the community all disagreement comes comes from the discussion over who's in charge that's why when the Holy Spirit's in charge we can be of one fellowship amen because he's in charge And so, you have to want God more than you want your own way. When you reserve or try to keep control of any one thing in your life, that's the place that the Holy Spirit can't fill. And so, we need to let go of a few things. 
We need to let go of the dark places, the shame in our lives. For he who is in us is the light of the world. Amen. We let him shine. We need to let go of our self-pity because he has seasoned us to be the salt of the earth. We need to go, let go of our unbelief because we serve a God who can and in him are enabled to fulfill the law. You can honor God with your life. We need to let go of the anger in our life that leads to a murderous spirit in our heart and practice forgiveness because he has forgiven us. We need to let go of the sexual idolatry in our life that leads to adultery and allow our hearts and minds be purified in Christ Jesus. We need to let go of the un Un, the unreasonable expectations that are in our hearts and our minds so that we can honor our marriages and, and honor our families and keep them safe, sacred before the Lord. One of the most liberating things that you can do is quit having expectations for your spouse but trust the Lord for your needs. And let them pursue honoring Him. See, this morning, the thing about being filled with the Holy Spirit, if your heart and mind is on someone else, it's in the wrong place. There's one place you have authority, and that's your own heart. Who feels that? Some of us need to let go of the desire to please people. We've but one to please, amen? Amen. Some of us need to let go of revenge or vengeful thoughts. Give those who've hurt you a second chance because God gave you one. Some of us need to let go of comfort. Because when they ask for our coat, we're to give our shirt also. You see. Some of us need to let go of a desire for justice because when they ask us to walk a mile, we need to be willing to walk too. Have you not noticed life's not fair? Let it go. Some of us need to let go of expectations of fair play and love your enemies. To let go of expectations of praise in our life because God has called us to do good things in secret. To let go of personal plans. And put him first. To let go of other sins and failures. To forgive one another. To let go of arrogance and pride. And to fast in secret and not for praise. To let go of self-reliance and lay up treasures that are in heaven. To let go of personal visions and fix your eyes on Jesus Christ. To let go of others' masters and to serve him only. To let go of anxiety and worry in our hearts and allow faith to win out. To let go of judgmental and a critical spirit within us and be gracious as God has been gracious with us. All right, God, you're getting personal. Let go of unholy associations and commit to God and His people. Let go of giving in and giving up and keep praying, keep seeking, keep knocking. To let go of being tolerant of this world's things and follow the straight path and enter the narrow gate. To let go of the false things of this world and connect with that which is good and true and bears fruit in Christ. To let go of false worship, to serve God with integrity. And to let go of shallow thinking and stand before the word of the Lord. You know what all that is? In a nutshell, that's the Sermon on the Mount. From beginning to end. He's called us to let go of this world's things. And accept the sufficient gift <clears throat> that he has given. When you release control of that one thing in your life, the Holy Spirit will fill that place.
you also have to let God change your attitude. This is probably the hardest for most of us in many ways. The Bible says here, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, seeking and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You know, some people love misery so much, they're always looking for the next problem. Amen? It seems like they just love it. They blame everyone else for their hang-ups, and they accuse everyone else for not caring, and they exhaust everyone else by soaking up all the energy and resources for themselves. Be careful, because every one of us has been there. If you're thinking outside your circle, be careful. I've met Christians that are so defeated that they apologize before even trying. Amen? I've seen Christians that are so pessimistic that they quit before they ever begin. I've seen Christians that are so negative that they would put Elon Musk's balance sheet in the negative. You know what I mean? They'd put it in the red. We've got to start sharing the joy of the Lord that he's given us. I've met Christians that are so hurt they'd give aspirin a headache. Helen Keller said the most pathetic person in the world is someone who has sight but no vision. I would dare say the most miserable person in the world is the one who's seen Jesus but's not been filled with his spirit. Who know of the grace but have yet to walk in it. In its fullest form. I want you to be able to sing victory in Jesus and know what it means. Amen. If God can forgive and forget your sins. And you can forgive yourself and let go. And you can forgive those around you. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Is it earth? Is it is in heaven? And so in the midst of that, he teaches us as he forgives us to forgive one another. We say that every Sunday. And some of us need to let go. I had a church member one time that, and I give him credit for being honest. And you'd think I would become smart enough over time. I told you about the gray matter thing earlier, right? Over time that I wouldn't ask him. But, but every, time, every Sunday I'd see him, I'd go, well, hey, how are you doing? And he would always say the same thing every Sunday without fail. He said, well, I was doing good. But I got over it. He said it every week. And here's the problem. Most of us as believers in Christ Jesus, we've had a good run. We've met Jesus Christ. We've had glorious moment, but we've gotten over it. God, help us to not be those of the 380 that didn't receive the filling of the Holy Spirit that for some reason got over it. Don't be that Christian that once knew the joy of the Lord but gave it up to hold on something else of less value. You have to sign up for the whole trip. You have to sign up for the whole trip. The Bible here says giving thanks always for all things. How often is always? Well, it's, yeah. All the time. All the time be thankful for all things to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every part of our being in our life is to be given to Him. We need to sign up for the whole trip. We live in a non-committal world. We don't commit to our future. We don't commit to our dreams. We don't commit to our faith. We don't commit to God. We don't commit to the church. We don't commit to family. We don't commit to work. We don't commit to anything. But if we're going to be filled with the Spirit, you've got to sign up for the whole trip. 
I remember a story about a preacher that on Sunday mornings afterwards, you know, doing the, doing the political thing at the back door, shaking the hands, you know, and, and kissing the baby, you know, you know, the preacher kind of thing that, you know, has been done for so long at the back door of churches and all that kind of, he was shaking hands and doing the customary thing, you know, as people were going off, hey, glad you're here today, you see you next Sunday, glad you're here today, see you next Sunday, glad you're here, and this one couple came up to him at the end and shook their hands and glad to see you here today, we'll see you next Sunday, oh, well, pastor, we won't be here next Sunday, oh, okay, okay you're not going to be he said no we're going to go somewhere else for a second opinion you know and, and, and again I want you to understand I want you to understand your commitment here is not to brother Chris your commitment here is not to a church just named Pleasant Hill your commitment here is to a people of God that are here to serve God and we can't accomplish what God has given us to accomplish and to be his people without you I hope you know that when you're not here on Sunday morning, it's not the same, you see. But here's the reality. We don't just need each other for an hour on Sunday morning, amen? We need to be the kind of people, and we are, for the most part, the kind of people that show up on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday and every other day of the week because God always shows up for us amen and as we grow in the things of God and the spirit continues and fills this place but more important as he fills our hearts will be show up people because I want you to know something there's only one a brother Chris amen and I'm not Jesus and I'm not the Holy Spirit and I hadn't figured out how to be everywhere at once that's why he's brought us together so that we can all show up in those places where God's appointed for us to be in him there was this guy and we'll close with this in a couple of verses there was a guy I read about and how many of you read the little daily devotional daily bread then you'll recognize this it was a story in there a couple of days ago and and I got interested in it and so I went and, and did the you know thing and 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 uh, and tried to find out more about this guy but I think it was Thursday Friday there was a story in there about this guy named Bill Pinckney and uh, I don't know if you remember that story but uh, is it's told that Bill was a not not the musician from years ago but this is Bill Pinckney the art the, the uh, sailor and uh, as, as they were accounting and as his, as his story, his life story, he was a sailor and, and was very proficient and skillful at what he had done. And, and he started to go on a lot of different trips with, uh, with educators on some special ventures and, and uh, that, would, uh, uh, that would cover certain places in history and times and, 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 and commemorating special events as well in, in, in voyages in history and he went on all those types of things and got connected with the educators and then through them began to get connected with students and begin to get interested in the lives of young people and through that he acquired he had a ship that was uh, a sailing vessel uh, that he called the name was Commitment and he used that sailing vessel to, to teach young people to come out. And if any of you have been involved with sails on boats and, and sail-powered boats at all, there has to be some teamwork for, for that to go very well. And everyone has to do their job. They have to be committed to their job. And there's lots of life lessons. And he used that vessel to teach young people that were in need life's lessons. And then he was inspired on one occasion to sail himself around the globe and he did it it's a long year but he did it and along the way he he didn't avoid some of the waters that a lot of people a lot of those that have circumnavigated 
the globe have, have avoided. Those that are right down around the southernmost continental points. And, and he, he did not avoid uh, the Cape of, of Good Hope and, and, and Cape Horn. Those treacherous waters where large oceans come together and the seas are constantly churned. As, as sea currents and tidal currents converge and, and are, are very dangerous waters. He didn't avoid them. And a few years later, someone asked him the question. As he was being uh, selected and as, as he uh, was, was being uh, placed in the National Society Hall of Fame or inducted there, the question was asked, why did you choose to sell those most treacherous waters where so many didn't make it before? And he said, because the kids were watching. The kids were watching. The kids were watching. My friends, we need each other in Christ, amen? And we need to be a committal type of people. Because the kids are watching. If there was ever a time the church needs spirit-filled people, because the kids are watching. The world needs a spirit-filled church because the people are watching. Central community needs a spirit-filled Pleasant Hill because they're watching. And without Christ in you, there's no hope. We have to want God more than sin, want God more than our own way. We have to be willing to sign up for the whole trip. Let me close with these verses. The Bible says, therefore, we must give more earnest heed to the things we've heard, lest we drift away. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. How many of you know that you have to be with the living God to depart from the living God? Be careful. This is written to the church, you see. But exhort or encourage one another daily what it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Do you not remember that this is a starting line, not a finish line? We're not there yet. So while it's today... If you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Let us hold fast together the confession of our hope without wavering, the Bible says. For he who is promised is faithful. And let us consider one another to stir one another up in love and good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some. But exhorting or encouraging one another as the more as you see the day approaching. Therefore also, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith why who for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross despising the shame and he sat down at the right hand of God Paul wrote to Timothy, I'm being poured out daily as a drink offering. In the time of my departure, it's at hand. I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I have kept the faith. And finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, he said. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day. And not me only, but also to all who've loved his appearing. I want to be a finisher. How about you? The Holy Spirit will fill you and guide you and keep you if you let him. 
if you let him. This morning, we're going to invite our musicians to come. And I don't know what the Lord is speaking to your heart today. But I would encourage you. The Bible says that when they had prayed, the place that they were assembled together was shaken. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. It's my prayer today that we would seek to be filled with the Spirit of God. We're going to sing a verse this morning. If you need to come and pray, whatever's on your heart, you, you come and pray. But you respond to the Lord as he leads today. Would you come join me for just a moment? It's been such a joy to get to know you, Betty, and to experience walking with Christ together and through our time study and praying in, in uh, Wednesday evenings and worshiping together on Sunday mornings. You're such a big part of who we are, and we're, we thank the Lord for you. And uh, it's a joy to see God's blessing in you. And this morning, we, Betty comes to us and expresses desire to join with us in our family sh fellowship, become a, a member of Pleasant Hill. And so we, this morning, are giving testimony to the grace that is in Betty's life in Christ Jesus. And, and Betty, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. And so today, we're going to invite her to join us. Uh, in membership this morning and so I would invite you to join me as we reaffirm our vows and commitments this morning as Betty commits through the expression of these vows together would you join me we'll all read aloud I do before God and this body as enabled by his spirit promise to repent of my sin and walk in the newness of Christ's risen life to confess Jesus as the son, as the son of God and the only way to eternal salvation to be baptized as instructed and modeled by Jesus Christ. To follow Jesus as instructed in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament. To be faithful to Jesus Christ in kingdom service by offering my prayers, presents, gifts, and means. And to participate in this congregation as established by approved church ordinances and according to God's written word. I promise to choose Jesus first. And to choose others before myself as enabled by his Holy Spirit. Amen. Betty, we love you and we welcome you into the fellowship of Christ Jesus here at Pleasant Hill. With all the rights pertaining there unto. And as you look around this room, guess what? You're part of us now. <laughs>
<laughs> and that's a blessing. And, and we feel blessed to have you as a part of us. So this morning, I invite you to welcome uh, Betty to be a part of the church family. And, and we're so glad, uh, Betty Myhock, that you're here and are a part of us. Let's pray and, and we'll be dismissed together. Lord Jesus, thank you for what you're doing here. Fill us to the full, we pray. Help us to get out of your way and to go and to be a blessing and to enjoy the fullness of your spirit and the fruits of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go be a blessing. I encourage you to meet Miss Betty if you've not done so.